Well, we are going to kick things off here with uh, kind of just the interface, getting around the interface. Uh, the, the interface, can, if you're just, remember, this is a basics class. If you're just starting out, the interface can be a little bit daunting. I want to give you some of the key things that, uh, that, that I really think that you'll want to watch out for here. All right. So opening images, uh, just file menu, come down here to open. All right. And it'll just take you to your open window and you can find an image on your computer. There's another thing here, browse and bridge. Bridge is Photoshop's file browser. All right, it's a more visual way to see your images. You've got some favorites over here. It's even got a folders view that'll look just like your, your folders in your Finder window or your Windows Explorer window. All right, uh, but you can navigate through your computer to find images and they'll appear here in the middle. I will tell you this up front, um, and, and I'm going to try to do this throughout this class because it's there's a deli there's a there's an odd thing happening in the in the photography community. It's been happening for quite a while, but remember this class is Photoshop Basics for Photographers. What I'm trying to keep in mind as we go through this course is things that you would do in Photoshop as a photographer. However, if you're a photographer, Lightroom is the place where you should be starting. All right. And I know there's people watching this. You've been using Photoshop forever and you think Photoshop is the place and somebody's told you it's Lightroom is the place for photographers to start. Photoshop is where we go to finish. Okay. There's things that Lightroom can't do when we need to get a little bit more intricate, a little bit more selective with our adjustments. Sometimes we jump into Photoshop. So I'm going to kind of try to keep that in mind as we go through these classes and, and show you things that you would do in Photoshop, assuming that you may have already come from Lightroom or even Adobe camera Raw on the camera Raw window. All right. So bridge, while it's a, it's a file browser, a lot of these tasks you would normally do inside of Lightroom, but there are definitely uses for bridge. Uh, if we want to quickly open an image all we got to do here is once we find the image we want we double click all right and this will take us over into photoshop uh, i did this on purpose I, I i made sure i had an image where this popped up because um again uh, remember you're watching a basics class this one really threw me when when i was starting out in photoshop remember i never understood why this happened okay um well i, ca I can sit here and probably it, it's probably a class in and of itself of why this happens, what color spaces are and all these things. The best thing to understand here, if you ever see this window as a beginner, okay, is every image has a color space tagged to it. All right. Most of the time you're going to see, especially as a photographer, most of the time you're going to see Adobe RGB or sRGB. Um, these are the, uh, the two that your cameras will really tag your JPEG photos with. So these are the two that you'll see. Photoshop is typically set up to work by default with a certain color space. So this whole window gets really scary. You're like, oh, it doesn't match the color, the current working space. What do you do? Here's the thing. Don't worry about it. The best thing you can do is just click use the embedded profile. Use whatever the embedded profile is for the photo. That's the safest thing you can do. It's not going to hurt your photos. Your photos are still going to look absolutely just fine. Okay, so don't worry too much about this. If you happen to see it, use the embedded profile, click OK. Everything's good in the world. You don't have to worry about it. All right, so now we're inside of Photoshop. Couple of things here. If you go into here to the window menu, you're going to see something called application frame. All right, now on a Windows machine, you're always in the application frame, meaning you've got a frame around Photoshop. When I move Photoshop, the whole program moves along with it. On a Mac, uh, a Mac, this is, this is relatively new. You could turn off application frame. And what it did is it kind of put this floating type of a thing. You'll see images floating around here and you can even see bridge behind it. And if you had your, um, if you had your desktop behind there, you, you'd see that. So that's the way it kind of it was on a long time for a Mac. They changed it and they actually added the application frame a while back. So uh, you just, you know, just kind of just know the difference here. An application frame means there's always a frame there. The application moves along with it. If you ever, if you ever have multiple images open, you come down here to the window menu, you can see what images you have because what might happen is, is you, you'll see, you can even tear these off. Okay. They're all docked up there. 
And um, if you come over here to the window menu, you can see here that as you go to arrange, um, you can come in here and kind of show all these different things. You can float your windows, uh, you can dock, you can do all these different viewable things. That's why we're talking about the interface here. So if you happen to be in this mode and maybe you hide an image, it's hiding behind another, just go to the window menu, you'll see all currently open images right at the bottom there. All right, I'm going to just drag this back up to the little tab there and it'll dock it back in. And that's how you switch back and forth between open images. Just click on them. Okay, uh, so we got our application frame down. Next, toolbox. Next, really big area over here. Whenever I talk about a tool, it's usually referring to the toolbox over here. So if you look over here, currently we have the move tool selected. Uh, this would be the selection tool. That's the rectangular marquee. If you hover over, it actually tells you what the tool is if you just leave it there for a second. If you ever see a tool with a little kind of triangle at the bottom, that means if you hover over and click, click and hold, there's other tools that are grouped inside of there. Like the move tool doesn't have one, so I can click all I want on that. Nothing's going to happen. Uh, but let's say the crop tool. The crop tool has got the perspective and the slice and the crop tool located in there. So anytime you see uh, a tiny little triangle at the bottom, that means that there's other tools inside of there. And again, uh, if you hover over for a second, it'll show you that it's the move tool. It'll even show you the keyboard shortcut right next to it, uh, which, is, which will very quickly get you. If I just press the letter V to get to the move tool, that takes me straight there. Uh, all right, as you choose tools, let's say I press B to get to the brush tool, which is actually just right down here. This up here, this is called the options bar. It's, it's kind of context sensitive. It's sensitive to whatever tool you have chosen. So the options you see up here will change based on the tool that you have chosen over here. So this is the brush tool. If I go select the gradient tool, you see it totally different than it was for the brush tool. So all those options are going to change based on what tool you have. Um, a good thing to do right now would be because you, you may have watched videos, you may have read an article or a book or something and change settings in a tool. If you want to follow along with me, I'm going to always assume the default settings in something and just come right up here to the top left corner. Whatever tool you're on, you're always going to see the tool options right up in the top left corner. There's a little triangle next to it. Click on it. Okay. Well, if you actually just here, let's go to the move tool and make it easy. Uh, if you come over here and you just click right on that triangle, all right, you'll see there's a little gearbox over here right next to it. Again, if I go to the brush tool, you'll see I'll switch tools. Click on a triangle. Again, there's another little gearbox there. So it's for every single tool. And you can reset that tool or you can reset all tools. I would right now reset all your tools because you may have inadvertently changed something for a tutorial. And as we go through here, I want to make sure that we're all kind of starting from the same place. So I'm just going to click OK. So all our tools are now reset to their default settings. Uh, OK, moving on down the line, palettes. Whenever we're talking about a palette, they're actually called panels. Um, when I learned Photoshop many years ago, uh, they were called palettes, but Adobe changed them to panels. This is a panel. Okay, I might still call it palettes, and you may still hear other people call them palettes. Layers panel, the channels panel, the paths panel palette, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're both, I think they're both widely accepted as, uh, as, as you can use them both. But that's what we're talking about here. Whenever I say go to the layers panel, just click on layers. If you're not sure where it is, go to the window menu, and they're all listed right here. Okay, so if I click on, let's say the brush, you'll see it's going to open up the brush panel for me. It's hidden right now, but you can see the little icon over here. You can also tear these panels off and you can, you can adjust your own workspace. So a lot of, it, it's really a personal thing. You'll have people with palettes all over the place. You know, they'll tear things out and then there's palettes all over the place because that's the way that they work. And then you'll have people that keep them always nice and tidy, but you can move them around. You can dock them with each other. You can see it like as soon as you see the blue outline, that means it'll be docked. And now they'll all move as one with each other. Okay. And then if you want to undock it, just click on it and tear it right off. You can put it back over here with these. If you ever get your interface to the place where you you, you just don't know where anything is anymore. Um, you, you just want to reset, come up to the window menu, go down to workspace, and then just choose reset essentials. And that'll reset you to the basic default essentials uh, of your workspace. Okay, last thing here, menus. We have a few different menus here. We've got the top menu. All right, so whenever I say go to the file menu, I mean go to the file menu over here, right? But there's, a, there's another type of menu and it could get somewhat confusing. And that is, let's say we go to the layer palette. 
Well, the layer palette, every palette has a little menu here. Let me tear off another one. There's a little icon in the top right of that palette. If I click on it, there's a menu that goes along with it. Just like the layers palette, there's a menu that goes along with it. But there's also the layers menu. So you got to be careful here. If somebody's ever talking about a menu, try to see the context that it's being used in. It's being used in the palette. If I say go to the layers palette or panel menu, then I usually mean this menu. Okay. If somebody says go to the select menu, then they're usually talking about the menu up at the top here. And I say that because I know it's it's a very quick way to to get thrown off. Somebody could say go to the adjustments uh, menu, and it, they could just literally miss a word by saying the adjustments panel menu. And I've seen people look up here and they don't see the adjustments menu because it doesn't exist up here. So just a, a little way to kind of differentiate those two. There are two different types of menus, and uh, and you'll want to know where they are. All right, and again, don't forget, best thing here, window, workspace, reset essentials. If all is lost and you just can't find anything, uh, that's the best way to go because it'll reset it back to the defaults that Photoshop came with.